Hey VIPs, Stephanie from Mrs. D's Corner here. Welcome. I'm really excited that you're here today because we're gonna be talking all about cooking in the classroom. And it is one of my favorite activities to do, like ever to teach in the classroom with cooking in the classroom. It's something I've done for the last three years and we'll continue. Ah! You guys fell, I'm so sorry. Let's try this again. Um, I'm hoping to continue cooking in the classroom this coming year in the new classroom. So I wanted to share with you all of the ins and outs, like how I got started, what it looks like, hey girl, and just go over everything with you so that you too can start cooking in the classroom. So first I did wanna mention that all of the resources are linked above. There are also some blog posts, like the 11 kitchen supplies that you need to get started cooking in the classroom. There are only 11 of them. You don't need a lot. Um, most of the time you can grab them at like the dollar store, the dollar tree, or have parents donate them. There are things you're gonna be using year after year, so you don't have to keep reinvesting in them every year. You could also write a grant or write a project on like Donors Choose or Pledge Sense to get those supplies that you need. And there's another um, blog post included about cooking in the classroom, which is what I'm gonna go over today. And then there are some links for the Fun Food Friday pack and then the Visual Recipe pack, which are both visual recipe packs, but they're very different. I get a lot of questions about them, so I'm going to show you the two differences. And there's also the um, word wall that mine are mixed in with my regular word wall, the word wall cards for fruits and vegetables with real pictures. So all of those are linked above. If you have any questions, let me know. But let's get started. So in the classroom, we cook. Yay, like big surprise, right? On Fridays, that is our fun day. Fridays are my favorite day in the classroom, not only because it's Friday, but because we do Fun Food Friday, we have Coffee Cart Friday, and we do Fine Motor Friday. So Friday is like, I don't wanna say it's a free-for-all because it's very educational and the kids are learning, but it's not necessarily sitting at a table and saying, read this book. It's more hands-on for the kids, it's more life skills types of things, and it's getting them involved in the community, getting them involved in the school community. So it's really, really fun. So typically what it looks like is this is the Fun Food Friday pack, and I do the same thing with the visual recipe pack, except um, I create my own, my own calendar. The Fun Food Friday pack comes with a calendar. So I just printed this. I haven't updated the dates yet. I will do that today. This is the Fun Food Friday calendar that I send home to parents. I usually send it home a week before the new month comes so they know exactly what we're going to be cooking that month. I also send home the permission slip and on the permission slip, it does have a spot for parents to write if their child is allergic to any of the ingredients that are in a recipe. And if they are allergic to any ingredients in the recipe, I ask them to provide alternative ingredients that we could use instead. So maybe a child is um, lactose intolerant and they can only use almond milk or something like that. I don't know, Can you, I don't even know if that's true. But I was just saying, like you could use um, applesauce instead of butter or something like that. Parents know stuff that we don't know and we can share that information. So I send this um, calendar home about a week before we start doing Fun Food Friday or well, like the next month's Fun Food Friday and it gives them the date that we're gonna be doing it, the recipe we're going to be cooking, and then all of the ingredients for that recipe that's included. So this is included in the Fun Food Friday. I also send home the recipe cards at the end of every month so that the parents can cook with their kids at home and their kids can help them cook the recipes we've already cooked in the classroom. So it's a lot of fun. This also gives me an opportunity to ask parents for ingredients. I might highlight on somebody's um, sheet like one person sheet be and just highlight jello will you just send in jello like a pack or two of jello and if I don't get it by the beginning of like the next week then I'll go grab it before we go cook jello or so this August has a bunch of jello because it's the start of the year we're doing easier recipes um, I'll go grab it that week or have parents send it in so that's how I get parents involved as well I also ask parents to donate supplies like the little small Dixie cups baggies, things like that that we can use to put our recipe in and deliver out to the rest of the school, which is something that we do as well to practice our social skills. So first we start with the calendar. So what do the actual recipes look like and how do we do that in the classroom? I'm sorry, I keep itching my nose. My nose is itchy. <laughs> um, so Thursdays, 
Thursdays during math, the first, or depends on what the math we're doing that day, but during math, so in the afternoon, we're typically, my printer is doing its own thing today too, we typically go over the, the, the recipe for Friday. So Thursday, we are taking the recipe mat, so this is what it looks like. It's numbered in order. Okay, and then this is the Fun Food Friday recipe. It's using board maker symbols. The difference between this and the visual recipes, I'm trying to pull it out here, I don't, this is what it looks like in the visual recipes pack. It's actual real pictures that I've taken of each step and then kids can actually visualize it instead of seeing board makers. It works both ways, personal preference. I like the real pictures. It's more relatable for the kids, but whatever works for you and works for your kids is best for them. So what we'll do is we'll cut all of these pieces out. That's part of our lesson. The kids are cutting these pieces out. We're all doing it together. This is a whole group lesson. So they're cutting these pieces out. They're already in order. So as the kids cut them out, they don't know that they're already in order. So they're typically not gonna set them in order on the, on the table. So I will have one of these extra printed for me and I have it on the table by me while we're going through the mat. So we'll say, okay, step one, we need to get a bowl. And then I will typically have this one in whole printed for me already. And then I will cut a piece out too while they're working on it or have it pre-cut. And I will show them get a bowl. And then I will show them the piece. Each kid sees the piece and they need to find that piece in front of them. Whether it's looking at all, how many steps are in all 19 pieces or if you have students who only have two or three, I'm working from one end, my pairs are working this way in, we're working at a kidney bean table, and we're giving each kid the steps, however many responses they need to work on. So it's a very interactive lesson for everyone, all hands on deck, and we're gluing each piece on here. Then we put these aside and let them dry overnight, and then on Friday morning, so Friday morning we come in, we do our, our abbreviated version of morning calendar, so we don't do, we do the entire thing, but at a much quicker pace and we do coffee cart Friday in the morning as well. So coffee cart Friday and calendar are the first thing we do. They go to specials, they come back, then it's time to cook. Cooking on Friday is our ELA block time. It is ELA block time because they are reading the recipe, they are reading the signs and um, everything on the bowls and the labels and every all the ingredients they are reading. So we do this during reading ELA block time. And they are using their now glued onto the mat um, recipe. So this is what they're using to go through. And I will put things on the table, the kitchen supplies, kitchen supplies we need and kitchen supplies we don't need. And I'll go through and I'll say, okay, get a bowl. And I'll be like, do we have a bowl on the table? And the kids have to look on the table and tell me yes or no. If we don't have it, I say, well, where can I find a bowl? They know where all the kitchen supplies are. It's something we go over for the first couple of weeks of school. They know where everything is. Get a measuring cup. Do we have a measuring cup? Okay, where do we find a measuring cup? Sorry, my phone's gonna die, it's fine. So we go through all of that and then we go through the recipe together and the kids are actually stirring. They're actually putting things in the microwave. Typically they don't pull it out of the microwave, but um, an adult will do that so they don't get burned just in case it's too hot. But they're stirring, they're mixing, they're cutting things with butter knives, very supervised. They're, um, what else is this one? They're adding fruit, taking things out of the refrigerator, pouring things into a pan. They are making the recipe. We are simply there to help them along the way. We let them stir, let them make a mess. It's really, really fun and the kids really enjoy it. So most of the time the recipes have to sit unless it's like a Chex Mix or something like that. But Jello is something that I would do and will do the first week of school. I had this question, actually I just answered this question in an email today. Do you do Fun Food Friday the very first week of school? And my answer to that is yes. We do Fun Food Friday the beginning, the very first week of school, and we typically start with like getting to know the kitchen lesson. So it may look like, this isn't the correct one, I just grabbed this out of my closet, but it might look like an adapted book about learning your way around the kitchen, safety rules for the kitchen, and then we're also going to talk about where all of the kitchen supplies are and we will go through making jello. Jello is something very simple for the kids to make and it gets them using all of the kitchen supplies and learning all of the rules with something that's really, really, really simple to make and it's fun for them. They really like jello. So then we usually have to wait, right? Because you have to wait an hour for the jello to sit or whatever recipe you're making, maybe it has to cool off. 
whatever it is, we set it in the fridge. We had a, I had a fridge in my last classroom, which was really nice. Fingers crossed for that. Um, but we'll let it sit until then after that, it's time to go to lunch because we have early lunch. So we would go to lunch, go to recess. Then we would have para lunch. So we would have all of the rest of our day. Then after snack, we would typically eat whatever we made that morning because it's usually ready. During our math block, it is time for us to separate the recipe. So after we have eaten our serving size of the recipe, it's time for us to either scoop out certain amounts into a baggie or make a scoop and put it in a Dixie cup with a spoon that we can go serve to the rest of the school. Not everybody in the school, but what, who we usually go to, we start with our inclusion teachers, we start with our admin, our, not, well, we do go to administration, we start with inclusion teachers, we start with resource teachers, and then we also start with our specials teachers because all of our kids see all of the specials. So we wanna make them feel included. After that, if we have anything left, we'll go hit up the front office and administration, and then if we have extra after that, we'll go through and hit up different grade level teachers for kids that are in that grade. Does that make sense? So that's how we share and determine how to share what, who to share our recipe with. And maybe if we hit first grade one week, maybe the next week we'll hit second grade. So everyone gets their chance. And actually in my last school, the um, administration and in the teacher's lounge, I would hang up what we were cooking for Friday because everybody would ask me and I would not I would forget off the top of my head in the moment. So I would hang this up in the office back in like the lounge in the office area, in the copy room and in the teacher's lounge. So teachers knew what we were cooking and they knew what to ask the kids because they would get really excited and ask the kids, what are you making the, today? Or they would ask them Thursday, what are you cooking for us tomorrow? Or when they would go to inclusion and haven't yet seen it on Friday, they would say, um, what are you bringing? Or they, they knew ahead of time what to ask the kids about, which was really great because it helped practice those social skills. So that is a, like an insider tip. Hang this up somewhere in the school for people to see who you're gonna go um, deliver all the goodies to. Even if you have to give um, half sheet copies or something to the teachers you'll be delivering to, they really, really appreciate it and it gets the kids really excited when the teachers and the administration who you're handing it out to are really excited to um, be getting something from you as well in return. So Fridays and afternoon, this is upside down, we are taking out all of our recipes. I typically just took like a starlight bin. I didn't buy anything fancy. And I would take a couple kids and each pair would take a couple of kids. And we would take a different section of the school and we would just walk around and we would knock on the door, wait for them to come open the door. We wouldn't just barge right in, we're using our manners. And then we would go in and we would use our communication boards, our AAC devices, or we would use our voices or sign language to ask the teacher if they would like some of what we had made. And I would, we would practice how to say, um, well not how to say, but we would practice how to say what we were, what we made that day, as well as saying you're welcome, or okay, thanks, we'll see you later. Like different responses for what the teachers would say if they wanted it or didn't say. And we had special core boards made up for our nonverbal students that they could use just for fun food Friday. So that way they didn't have to carry around like the huge like go talk or their huge binder. I would just take a clipboard with say this is the communication board and they would be able to point to it. So it wasn't cumbersome to carry while I'm trying to walk, you know, two or three kids with me and then have like a handful of stuff as well. So that's typically what it looks like in the classroom. I love the Fun Food Friday pack. This is what I started with in the classroom. And then once we worked through all of those recipes, so we typically did the same recipes over each year. Friday afternoons, I would send home the Glavigalude mat to the parents. And then at the end of the month with the Fun Food Friday pack, they would get the actual recipe, the full page recipe to go along. And then we get the calendar for the next month. What I like about this pack is a little different. Like I said, this is the visual recipe pack. So the one with the board maker just comes with the board maker, comes with the calendar, and it is linked above. That is what we started with. So then we moved into this using the real pictures for our kids. What I like about this is it gives you different options. There are a lot more recipes and you can make them into, this is actually one of the freebies, I think, yes. This is one of the freebies that you can try out. The Lucky Marshmallow Squares. We make those in March for, you know, that's why they're Lucky Marshmallow Squares. But I just took the recipe mat itself and put it in a file folder, laminated the pieces and added Velcro. That way we could just use these over and over every year 
for some of my kids who maybe aren't quite ready to be cutting them, uh, cutting themselves, that sounds terrible, cutting by themselves, they need the hand over hand. Or now I can put this in a center for students to work on if we've already done a, a recipe or however it's looking, we have this. But what I love about the visual recipes with the actual pictures is that it comes with a survey for the kids to fill out once they finish the recipe. So it's two pages, so you can easily cut this in half and make it a little booklet or save them all. You can ask the kids, what did you make today? And there are three pictures. I did taste the recipe or I did not because there were some weeks where my kids were super excited to cook the recipe, but they didn't want to eat it, which is fine. That's okay if they don't want to try it they help, that's you know their participation grade. But then they tell, so their parents know if they tried it or not, and if they tried it, how did they like it, and would they make the recipe or wouldn't make it again. This also helps parents because I'm sending the recipe home, I'm sending the survey home, so now parents know, well, I'm not gonna make this Jello with my child because he didn't like it. Or maybe it was the taste, maybe they didn't like blueberry, maybe they like strawberry Jello. You never know. And then there's also this, I can follow and comprehend the steps of following the recipe. What did you make? How long did it take? An estimated time. What ingredients did you use? And what kitchen tools did you use? So I really like this, this um, out of the visual recipe pack because it gives us that extra step. So Sherry wants to know, do most of your recipes include an oven or a stovetop? None of my recipes use an oven or a stovetop. All of the recipes that are included in both the Fun Food Friday pack and in the visual recipe pack, all you need is a microwave. Some of them you don't even need a microwave. Um, and you just, some of them you need a fridge. So if you have access to like the teacher's lounge fridge, you could use that as well, but you don't need an oven or a stove. So just a microwave, no toaster ovens, no toasters, just a microwave, um, something super simple to cook in the classroom and not all of them do need it. They also come in these big ones. So if you wanted to laminate these each time to reuse year after year, you could laminate the larger ones. There also are adaptive work binder pages. So those of you that use the adaptive work binders, I'm trying to find it. My printer was throwing a fuss at me before I sat down. And of course it didn't print that page. It's probably on the floor over there. There is an adapted work binder page for the visual recipes that includes two Velcro lines here. And then you can, you'll still cut out the same pieces as in here and use it as an adaptive work binder page. So you can make binders for each of your kids. You have that option. You have the file folder option, and then you have the option to just cut it and paste it normal by using this sheet. With the visual recipes pack, I did take it one step further because in the Fun Food Friday pack, we were getting questions, I was getting questions about making big larger cards. And I don't have, or I didn't have the board maker software. I did end up buying the CD. So I have the CD now, but in the visual recipe pack, there are larger cards. So if you wanted to, while they were going through it, you could have this out and you could say, okay, here's a larger card. What is this? Count two bags of popcorn. So you can have your students count. Instead of showing them the smaller one, you could have these out and do that with them as well. Thank you, Ashley, for um, answering that question as well. I do want to brag on Ashley. Ashley is one of my very good friends. And every time I go home to Pennsylvania, I go into her classroom and she is like the most inspiring person ever. But her and her paras in her classroom do a really cool thing with the recipes and maybe I have, I think I have a picture or a video of it, but they take all of the recipes for the year and then turn them into a large recipe book, into a large recipe book to send home at the end of the year. So their parents have a book full of recipes that they've cooked in the classroom. All of the surveys and everything are in there as well. So it's really cool. So not to add another thing to your plate, Ashley, but I'll have to text you and tell you if I don't have a video of it. But if I don't, if you wouldn't mind sharing that in the group, that would be fantastic. But those, that is how I cook in the classroom. I think it is a fantastic activity for your kids to do. It's a great life skill. There are so many different recipes. I don't know what this is right now. So you can try the freebies for these. The Jello freebie is actually free in the preview for the Fun Food Friday pack. So if you wanted to try that one out the first week of school, see how it goes, you can do that as well. The Lucky Marshmallows for the visual recipes is free as well as Leprechaun Juice. You could totally do different food coloring or different Kool-Aid and call it something separate if you wanted to do it not in March, which you totally could do. 
There are also, with the Fun Food Friday pack, you learn how to set the table. There are adapted books, questions. There's a little activity for setting the table. There are a bunch of different things included in both of the packs, and the packs are completely separate. So maybe some of the recipes will overlap, but for the most part, they include different recipes all together. So um, Lori says, I just have a lot of allergies in my class. Yes, so allergy or something. When I created the Fun Food Friday pack, I had a child in my classroom who was allergic to peanuts. So I was very cognizant of that when I made that. Some of the recipes in there do have peanuts, but we would just alternate, or not alternate, we would just, what's the word I'm looking for? Use a dip, we would substitute. We would substitute that ingredient for something else. So if we're making a Chex Mix, we just wouldn't use peanuts. We would maybe grab cranberries or something separate like that. Um, Ashley says she was a gluten-free student, so they just grab gluten-free items or just skip that item altogether. If you ever have a question about ingredients that are in any of the recipes, just send me a message and I'll, I can send you the list of ingredients that are in there. Um, if you have any other questions about cooking in the classroom, again, you have the two blog posts above and you have me and this entire group to ask about cooking in the classroom. So it's definitely doable in the elementary level. You can do it at middle school and high school. I know a lot of you guys that do middle school and high school, some of you with like the self-contained classrooms actually have full kitchens in your classroom, which is amazing. So keep on cooking. If you have any questions or suggestions or something's really worked for you and you thought it was great, or maybe you wrote a grant to get supplies for cooking in the classroom, please share with us so that we can do it with our kids and get all of the supplies and everything that they need for cooking in the classroom as well. So I will see you guys tomorrow afternoon, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time for our, today's Thursday, right? For our Friday and last live of this week. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye.